Hello, I'm Lizzie Carr. I'm an adventurer, environmentalist and founder of the global movement Plastic Patrol. Thank you Girl Guiding for inviting me today to be part of the Adventures at Home Festival. I'm so thrilled to be here and to talk to you a bit more about my environmental campaigning, my adventures and a little bit more about what you can do to be an activist at home during lockdown. So I've got a couple of questions here that you've already asked me. I will come to those at the end. In the meantime, I'm just going to give you a bit more background about me and, and tell you a bit more about my adventures. So I started campaigning uh, in 2016, about four years ago, after I'd had an illness. And I, um, I started paddleboarding as a way of getting fitter and stronger and restoring my health again and it was only because i was paddleboarding on the canals and rivers in and around london where i lived that i was able to see just how much plastic there was everywhere like it was it was quite horrifying and this was at a time when people weren't really talking about it in the way they they are now and i really wanted people to understand and see what i was seeing in the way that i was seeing it the moment that really struck me and was a real turning point in my activism was paddling one day along the Regent's Canal and I saw a bird's nest and it was made up almost entirely of plastic, wrappers and straws, that kind of thing. And there were these lovely little eggs in there and I thought that as soon as those eggs hatched, the first thing they would see is plastic, was a real terrifying moment for me. So I decided that I would paddleboard the length of England through our canals and rivers from Godalming in Surrey up to Kendal in the Lake District, which was a 400 mile journey. And I would photograph every single piece of plastic that I saw on that route so that I could show people just how bad the problem was from one person's single journey. And across the 22 days that it took me to complete that, I took about 3000 photos and logged around 20,000 pieces of plastic. And that's just what I could see with my naked eye. That didn't include what had sunk under the water, what was on sort of the other side of the towpath or on the banks or sort of nestled away in the shrubs and reeds that you don't see very clearly when you're paddling along. And by the time that journey had finished, my campaigning had snowballed and I developed an app so that everybody all around the world could contribute to the information that I'd already gathered. For me, it was a way of understanding what this problem looked like, the trends and the patterns, the brands responsible, the types of litter that we're finding all over the world. And if we could build that evidence, then we could go to industry and we could go to government and we can campaign for big change. Another one of my adventures that I did in 2018 was I paddleboarded the length of the English Channel. And along that journey, that was, I think, 24 miles, I, I did microplastic sampling. So microplastics, if you don't know, are tiny, tiny plastic fragments. Often they're so small that you won't see them with your naked eye and they come off of things like your clothes. If you wear synthetic clothing and you put it through the washing machine, it all washes out these tiny, tiny fibres that end up in our oceans. So I was taking water samples every fourth mile to analyse and understand what the problem looked like with microplastic. So it starts inland with these really big pieces that we're finding in the canals and rivers, and then eventually it breaks down and it wears down and it flows out into our oceans, where most of it unfortunately sinks or wears away into microplastics. And the reason microplastics are so dangerous is because they get eaten by wildlife and marine species that mistake it for food. Um, and it can cause all sorts of problems um, and even kill them in some, in some instances. So it's really important that we try and tackle this problem before it ends up in our oceans because that's when it gets really problematic for the animals that we love. All of my adventures have been amazing fun and, like when, I, and when I paddled the length of England, you know, I started in the county that I was born and I did it on a shoestring budget. I was completely on my own. I camped on the towpaths every night. I cooked my food up on a little stove. Um, all, of my, all of my kit, my tent, my sleeping bag, my clothes, my food was all stored on the front of my board. It was just the best adventure and I hadn't even left the UK. I love exploring what's on my doorstep, what's around me and learning more about the country that I live in. 
But more than that, all of my adventures have been a vehicle to be able to talk about issues with the environment, with wildlife, with plastic pollution, and getting people thinking about really important subjects, but using paddle boarding and a really, really fun experience as a way of, of getting people to listen and getting them interested. We've had nearly 300,000 pieces of litter logged in the Plastic Patrol app and we've had around 15,000 volunteers that have come out and joined us on cleanups. So the great thing about our cleanups is that anyone can be involved. It's all completely free and it includes activities like paddleboarding, yoga, parkour, hip fitness. So for me, it's a way of combining your well-being and your own lifestyle with the well-being of the environment. And we ask everybody that joins us on cleanups to download the app and their payment, their nature tax, is to photograph everything they find when they're out doing one of our activities. And all of that gets analysed by scientists that we work with to unpick and understand trends and hotspots all around the world. And then we go to industry and government and we work with them to find solutions or we um, find ways that we can help tackle litter better using the insights that we've gathered. So it's really, really important that when people are going out litter picking, whether it's on our organised cleanups or maybe you're going out taking the dog for a walk or going out somewhere with your family, that you're recording what you find in a centralised app. So we've got this repository of data that helps us make change at the top where we need it to happen. So if you've got any more questions, obviously I'd be really happy to answer them, but now I'm quickly going to just answer a couple of the ones you've already sent. So the first question, how are you staying environmentally friendly during the pandemic? When you're at home, there's lots of ways that you can continue being productive and environmentally friendly and thinking about the planet, even if you can't be actively out there doing something about it. Um, for me, when I go on my daily walks, I litter pick and I log everything in the Plastic Patrol app, obviously. And um, other things I do is I make sure that I buy all of my fruit and veg from the local green grocers and support local businesses as much as I can during this really turbulent time. Um, I grow a lot of my own herbs and um, I've started growing some fruit and vegetables as well. So I've got tomatoes on the go, some spinach, some kale, some courgettes. Um, and just trying to be a bit more self-sufficient whilst I am at home more. And if you can and you have the means to, I think it's really important to try and grow your own produce at home and learn more about the process of your food and, and sort of grow more respect for where it comes from. Okay, question two. What is my advice for a young person who aspires to make change? I think anybody can make change. I started my campaigning completely on my own. I was this sort of this one person crusade to end plastic pollution and now it's been supported by thousands of people all over the globe. So really truly if you're passionate about something never underestimate the power of you as an individual and the impact you can have. We live in a time now where social media and digital communication gives us a voice that we would never have had before. So use that to your advantage. Keep conversations going online. Connect with people you wouldn't normally connect with. Learn from them. But also find your community. Find like-minded people, whether that's in forums or groups on Facebook. It's really important to connect with like-minded people that believe in what you believe in and keep you motivated and bring fresh ideas and support what you're trying to achieve. And final question, question three, what can be done to save the environment quickly? Sadly, I don't think there is a quick fix to saving the planet. I think it takes change at every level, whether it's you and what you buy, whether it's the industry and what they produce or the government and the laws that they introduce. But what I do think is that it's a system and that everybody has to work together within that system. And if we don't, then things can't get resolved. If you really want to feel like you're making a difference quickly, really think about what you're buying. Because where you put your money is essentially where you're casting a vote. So if you do buy something new, try and make sure that it's from a sustainable supplier. Only buy new if you really, really have to. If you can fix something, borrow something, get it second hand, these are always the preferred routes to go down. 
ultimately every time you buy something you're casting a vote you're saying yes i'm happy to continue living in this way and supporting this system or you're saying no i want to see a better world a better future and i'm going to put my money into sustainable companies and sustainable businesses that put the planet before profits and that's everything thank you so much for having me at the adventures at home event with girl guiding i've really loved sharing my story with you you can find out more about me on instagram lizzie underscore outside or on my website lizzieoutside.co.uk if you want to find out more about Plastic Patrol, then you can visit the website plasticpatrol.co.uk and see when our cleanups are happening for the rest of this year. Thank you.